Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press and today I have with me Patrick Caporal. He is the Chief IO Architect for Data Centre Group. How are you doing Patrick? Hi David, good to be here with you today. So today we're going to be talking about the Think System SR650. We've just released some new NVMe rich configurations. So in this video we're going to be talking about those and talk to Patrick about um, what the value is and why customers will do them. So Patrick, first of all, um, NVMe rich, what does that mean? NVMe rich. Well, in our new solutions that we have for the SR650, we can support up to 24 NVMe drives in the server, and that's the richness of it. It actually expands our current capability up to all the way to 24 drives. We, we currently support up to 12 NVMe Correct. with the, the AnyBay backplanes that we have. Uh, this gives you even more than that. What, what sort of um, customers, what sort of applications would take advantage of that configuration? Yeah, applications and workloads that are looking for low latency, high mm -hmm. bandwidth, high capacity storage needs are really going to take advantage of these new configurations. And the, the, the application type? Well, application types such as uh, virtualized uh, clustered SAN solutions, yep. uh, software-defined storage. Right, right. Uh, you're also looking at technologies such as NVMe over fabrics, leveraging low latency interconnects using high speed, 100 gigabit Ethernet adapters, leveraging the low latency interconnect into the server, along with low latency NVMe storage in the server. Right, yeah. So before we get into the actual components that make up the system, let's talk about the architecture, right? Yes, uh, we have a block diagram and we can uh, go through that with the details. All right. So David, this is our 16 NVMe uh, SR650 configuration and you can see a representation of the drives in the front of the server there. Yeah, so in this, in this particular configuration, this is the one with 16 NVMe and optionally uh, eight SAS SATA drives. Correct, that's so an optional uh, that you can yeah. add all the way up to 24 so the, drives in total. These are the, are the NVMe and then these are the, the SAS or SATA, SSDs or hard drives. That's correct. As, as you see fit, yeah. Okay, so then how, uh, how do these drives connect to the CPUs? Yes, so the block diagram here uh, is showing a two socket uh, SR650 system, CPU1 and CPU2, mm -hmm. they're interconnected together with Intel's UltraPath Interconnect bus or known as the UPI. Um, we have everything else shown here are going to describe the PCI topology of the system and how the uh, motherboard connections, which are in the solid uh, lines here, connect to our onboard slots, risers, or internal motherboard connectors. Mm -hmm. We install a series of PCI switches that expand the PCI topology so that we can interconnect the NVMe flash drives that are PCI attached drives uh, into the CPU uh, topology through those switches shown here in red. The, the red, red box, the red yes. adapters, yes. E each one of these adapters is actually a PCIe switch that it connects the CPUs up to the drives. Yeah. Uh, in this case here, uh, we've got a configuration that supports up to 16 NVMe drives, and we have a balanced configuration with eight NVMe drives that connect back to CPU1 and eight NVMe drives that connect back to CPU2. Now, now why is having a balanced configuration important? A balanced configuration is important for those applications and workloads that want to get the maximum performance benefit. When you're looking at uh, connecting and getting that lowest latency, any of the workloads that are running on this CPU, for example, and the cores that are within the CPU, you're simply just one hop away from getting to that storage, so you're going right. to get that lower latency. If you have a solution where all of the drives are connected to just one CPU, then any workload that's running on the other CPU has to traverse the UPI link and then go to the drive. And slow everything down. And it'll have an increased latency. So our balanced configuration in the SR650 from the drives is going to be that optimal performance yeah. capability. You, you're making sure that all the components, the CP, all both CPUs, all the IOs, all working to its best capacity. Absolutely. Yeah, that's okay. what this delivers. Now, there's also the SAS SATA connection. That's a RAID adapter that's installed in this riser slot here. Correct. That's an optional offering that you can support an additional eight drives in addition to the 16 mm -hmm. NVMe flash devices that are installed. Um, you can support that for additional storage needs that you may have as well. Or you can use that slot for, uh, for, uh, for other IO. For it, absolutely. We, we, are, we have an additional slot here over on uh, this side connected to CPU2, but this is also optional. You can certainly install another network card. Yeah. Uh, we also have the onboard LAN on motherboard. Let's look at the, at the back of the server for yes. these. Um, so there's the LOM, LOM slot. LAN on motherboard, right. that's correct. And so we, ha we offer 1 gig and 10 gig choices there for that. Very And that's a dedicated correct. slot for that. But also in this configuration, there is an additional by 16 available slot. Um, and if you don't use the SAS SATA, you've got the, the um, 
by eight slot that's available. There. Correct. So you want to have you know your network connectivity, of course, to balance again the amount of flash storage that you have inside the server. You need to have the network bandwidth as well to bring your traffic in and out of the, right. the system. Okay. So this is the 16 NVMe. Correct. You've also got the 24 NVMe, right? Correct. And I've got okay. a diagram for that here as well. Yes. So slight difference in the front, of course. Right. So all NVMe this time, no all SAS data. Now I would also point out too that unlike the previous um, configuration or the existing configurations, these are purely NVMe, not the AnyBay. So these are not something that you can have just SAS, SAS and SATA or NVMe. These are all NVMe configurations. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. This configuration is absolutely optimized for an NVMe solution. Right. So the backplanes that we've developed for this solution are specifically NVMe backplanes. Right. So then what's the difference then architecturally on this one compared to the 16? Yeah, great question. So what's the first and foremost difference is we now have 12 NVMe drives connected to each one of the CPUs through a slightly different PCI topology. So we've actually developed a new switch. So a new PCI switch adapter, the 1610-8P, mm -hmm. has been developed uniquely for this configuration. And we, we'll, we'll look at that in a moment, right? Yes, we yep. have that. Uh, we'll show that in the hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, we have a new riser that is going to be installed into the solution. And this really helps to keep that balance that we talk about. We use the onboard motherboard connectors and actually cable the PCIe lanes that are connected to those uh, onboard connectors over to the riser card. So that keeps our balanced solution where we bring more PCIe lanes onto this riser and now connect up to three adapters on that riser card. Yes. Okay. Now, so this is this is a balanced configuration. Correct. Now. I notice here it says that the, it's a two to one oversubscription. Yes. So there's some trade offs with oversubscription. There, there what, are what, some is, what, is it, what does oversubscription mean? And, and why do we need to do that? Well, oversubscription, uh, there's there's a, a maximum amount of PCIe lanes that are available within the two socket uh, uh, system. And, and we simply have more NVMe drives than are available lanes. So some solutions might look at a higher subscription, like three to one or four to one. In our SO650, so we absolutely want to minimize it yes. because you want to maintain the highest amount of bandwidth that you can get from mm -hmm. each of the drives. Mm -hmm. So our solution is, again, a balanced solution, but it's also a two to one oversubscribed. So for every four lanes of PCIe interconnect from one of the CPUs, two NVMe drives will be connected back to the hence, four Hence lanes. two to one. Hence the two to one. But that's a balanced, every one of the drives is balanced at that two to one oversubscription. And again, we've balanced 12 drives to CPU one and 12 drives to CPU two. Right. Now this one is also balanced in terms of the NIC cards, right? Yes, and that's another key attribute of this 24 drive configuration. We have two NIC interface card slots available in addition to the LOM, which is always available uh, integrated onto the motherboard. Um, but each one of these network interface card slots are a by 16. So you can support your 1025 all the way up to 100 gig ethernet in those slots. And they are also balanced. So you have one by 16 PCI slot connected to CPU one and another one connected to CPU two. Right. Okay. So let's look at the, the back of the, uh, the server again. Um, again, with the, the two slots are available for the NIC cards and the remaining slots um, for the PCIe switch adapters. That's correct. Yep. And um, we still have the LOM card. Still have the LOM card again, optional one gig right. or 10 gig multiple ports there as well. Yeah. Okay. So now let's go and have a look at, go back to the server and have a look at the physical cabling and, and what, what the design's gone through to get to, to make it all fit. Yeah, let's look at the server. Yeah. All right. All right, so here we are now with the actual server hardware. Um, the, the front of the server, we have 24 NVMe drives. Correct, David. There's 24 NVMe drives in this configuration up in the front. This is our 24 drive right. config. And now, of course, if we had um, the 16 with SAS SATA as well, the SAS SATAs would be, would be these eight over here. That's correct. Yeah, okay. Um, now, can, those drives connect to the back planes. There are three eight bay back planes. Let me spin this around. Um, so these backplanes are NVMe only. This is these the NVMe, the NVMe yes. only backplane. So these in this are new, a new design. This is a new design. Yes, mm -hmm. it's an eight bay NVMe only backplane right. uh, supporting the twenty four drive configuration. Now the cabling, you see, there's quite a few few cables going from the backplanes back. Tell me about those. Yeah, the the, the cables are really optimized for the high speed uh, PCIe interconnect that mm -hmm. we need, and also the specific cables have to be you know routed in such a way that they don't affect or interfere with the thermal cooling that is right. certainly needed in there. And and David. Uh, one additional uh, key uh, point to note here is for these uh, new cable designs we have, that's really going to benefit thermal performance and provide maximum reliability for the SR650 configuration. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. 
Now, so this is one we've, we've removed to show you. Yes. Uh, what, what, are, what are all the connectors? Yeah, so th these are the connectors that are going to connect into the back plane itself. So each one of those is going to support two drives worth. Yep. And then uh, we actually have come up with uh, the unique cable design for the SR650 so that we can use the channels that are available on the sides of the CPU and the memory DIMMs to route from the front to the rear. And you can see that we've got uh, quite a elaborate uh, design of the, the right. new cables for this And offering. the big advantage there is that it keeps the cables flat on the base of the system Correct. to maximize airflow, right? Absolutely, yeah. You can see from here the cables are definitely nicely placed and organized, and these are the custom cables that we've developed for this solution, and mm -hmm. again, to uh, m maximize and optimize the airflow that goes through the server. Right, and the cables route through the cable channels either side? Correct. That's why this cable is split like this. It's split, yeah. yes. We have to bring the cables up and around the sides of the CPU yes. and the memory. Yes, and then they, they're tucked around, and then they're connected to the various adapters and the two onboard yes. NVMe connectors. Yeah, right? in this case, the onboard NVMe connectors are shown over here, and as shown in the block That's diagram, they're actually connected over to this riser card. So I'm going to bring this up like this, yep. and you can start seeing some of the uh, new design elements right, so that we brought in. So the, the, are these the two then? Yeah, these are the two that come from the onboard. Correct. Uh, this, this riser card has been specially designed for this configuration. That's correct. Uh, it's red because it's a pre-production It is a pre-production. It'll be green once right. we go to production. Yep. Okay, so the riser card takes in from those on board plus uh, it, it also pulls in the other PCI lanes from the directly from the system board. Correct. And that feeds the three cards. What three cards have we got here? Yeah, so the three cards we have here, the one on the top is an Ethernet. It's actually a two-port 100-gig Ethernet can we pull adapter. That out? And we can pull that out, of course. So this is our, uh, again, high-speed Ethernet. For those solutions that may want to do MVME over fabrics, uh, this is a perfect offering mm -hmm. for that with high speed. And then we've got uh, the switch adapters there. Uh, the one down here, that's actually our new 1610-8P uh, right. switch adapter that we developed for the solution as well. Right. What's different about it compared to the existing? Well, it supports eight, eight, up to eight drives. So this right. uh, uh, specific switch has got the additional connectors to support up these, to eight These two new drives. connectors here. That's yep. correct. Right. Yep. Okay. So that's that riser. That's that riser. Um, we've got an additional um, this card here. Yes, that's another switch card that's uh, plugged into yeah. a slot four of the server. Yeah, and then there's another one that's that's the another one that's plugged into the onboard. I'd say that's plugged in the onboard slot seven. That's uh, another switch to support the uh, the rich NVMe yep. configuration. Now let's pop, pop that open too. So we've got uh, riser two here. All right. And what have we got there? So one more uh, PCIe switch adapter in one of the slots, and then yes. another, as we talked about, the second available uh, network interface slot uh, is present, and another 100 gig Ethernet right. adapter could be installed. So in this I, this Ethernet card is connected to CPU one or CPU two. That one's two. connected to CPU two. And this, this one's CPU, connected yes. to CPU one. Ba balanced I/O. Balanced I/O. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, Right, so I think that's about it for this 20, the 24 configuration. The 16 configuration is, is similar. Similar. Uh, yep, it's uh, balanced and not oversubscribed. Not oversubscribed, right. that's correct. That's yes. going to give you the maximum bandwidth availability to those drives up to 16. Uh, different configuration of switches is the block diagram yeah. previously yeah. shown. So that's the, that's the configuration, the new NVMe rich configurations. Now we're actually filming this um, in our Morrisville, North Carolina campus, um, home of our development Part of our development organization. Part, part of our Patrick, development yeah. organization is yep. here, yes. Um, so we invite you to come and visit us. Uh, we um, offer um, lab tours. The briefing center where we are now um, uh, invites customers to come and visit us, talk to um, architects such yeah. as Patrick. Um, you, uh, you have peers in performance and power and thermal. Yes. Um, all of those people are available here. You can walk over to Building 7 and, and see the labs in operation and talk to the people about the, the problems that you need to solve and, and what offerings we have to help you there. Yeah, come down, uh, come talk to me, ask for me. I'm happy to talk about IO solutions, this SR 650 configuration in particular, or other IO solutions that will meet your, meet your workload needs. Yeah. So there you go. So this is the Think System SR650. We've been talking about the N new NVMe rich configurations that we just released. Patrick, thanks very much. Thanks, David. Glad to be here with you. Hope you found the video useful, and we'll see you later.